This is HMCS Athabaskan. It's one of three area air defense destroyers in Canada. It's 130 meters long, and basically her, her job would be to provide any air defense for an entire group of ships if we were in a capture situation. So I'm a sub lieutenant officer on the ship. That's a junior officer rank. I work mainly on the bridge, helping navigate the ship for the captain. As well, I'm also the diving officer. I've been in the Navy for about five years, and I spent the last year working with the Chilean Navy in Antarctica and South America. So I've been on the ship for basically only a year, but um, I'm enjoying it quite a bit so far. Okay, so welcome to the bridge. This is where the entire ship is organized from. So there's a bridge team up here 24 hours a day that is basically doing the work for the captain. Generally, the bridge team is going to be composed of an officer to watch, so that'll be someone like myself with the bars on their shoulders. They're going to be running the ship. He'll be assisted by another officer to watch, and that guy is going to stand over here. He's basically making sure that the ship is safely navigated, so to help him in that effort, we have a navigation system here, and then we have a navigation radar here, so that's going to help us avoid collision and also make sure we know where we are at all times. In the event that uh, neither of these are, say, they go down or they're giving us inconsistent information, we can still do, still do everything we can do electronically. We can still do by paper the old-fashioned way if we need to. Come over here and we'll take a look at where the ship is actually steered from. So the first thing you're going to notice about where the ship is actually steered from is he can't see where he's going. The entire purpose of this is that there's one officer who's running the entire show up here. He's taking in information from all the outstations, from the communicator, from the navigator, and uh, all the lookouts. He's telling them what's actually going on out there. And he's going to be giving the orders on the direction to the, uh, the gentleman who's actually steering the ship in a certain direction. Beside him, we have another gentleman who's going to be the throttleman. He's overviewing the engines so we can see all the different machinery configurations we have. And so he can see it here, and then we can go down below and take an actual look at uh, where the engines are. All right, so we're now in the machinery control room. Everything for damage control is controlled here. So if there's a fire or a flood, everything will be coordinated to this area here. This is the same steering position there. In the event we can't steer from the bridge, we have other ways to do it as well. As we come around the corner here, this is sort of the mainframe of where everything happens with our propulsion. So that's the engines that make the ship move and all our power generation. So as you can see, all these dials here, that controls all the generators we have on board. The gentlemen who actually administer it are all right here. They're called engineering officers of watch, just like the guys who are on the bridge. All the screens you hear, see here are all schematics. They let us know what's going on with the engines at any point. And where are the engines themselves? They're actually right below us. Okay, so we're here in the wardroom, which is the officer's lounge. It's a place where all of us can come to relax after we're off watch. Um, generally what happens in here, we get movies nights, sometimes we'll play cards, it's a lot of magazines, that sort of thing. Um, everyone's drinking coffee all the time. Um, it's basically just an area, the rest of the ship is very regulated, there's lots of rules, there's a yes sir, no sir sort of attitude. The whole idea is you can come in here, sort of relax, have a little bit less of a regulated life, and uh, sort of refresh yourself for the next time you have to go up on watch.